Hi, welcome to your video on 4-5-B, writing a function rule. So problem number one here, um, I've kind of already started it for you. So here, I just want to talk. So an archery club charges an annual membership fee of $65 plus $2 per visit. And I've highlighted that um, because that's very important information. Um, and we're going to use that to complete the table. So writing a function rule for the total cost of belonging to the club if you make V visits in a year. How much would it cost if you use the club 15 times in the year? So the first thing we want to start with is taking that important information and making a table. So as you can see here, if I don't make any visits, I have spent $65 on that membership fee. If I go one time, I have to spend the $65 and I have to pay an extra $2 for that visit. And that pattern continues, so two visits is $69 and three visits is $71. And you can then see the pattern is happening here if you look for your constant um, y over x pattern. I'm adding two for my y values. My x values are adding one. So my constant is two over one. Sorry. So two over one is my pattern. When, and then when x is zero, y is 65. So I can use that information to write my function rule, which is c, using the letter c there to match with the total cost. 2v, using v instead of x to match with the visits, and then plus 65. Also an important note is that you could write it as c equals 65 plus 2v, that's just changing the order. The next part of the question is talking about how much would it cost if you use the club 15 times in a year. Okay, so what we're gonna do is take that rule, c equals 2v plus 65, and we're gonna insert the 15 in for the letter V. So I'm just gonna rewrite this using that placeholder. And then I'm gonna plug in the 15 times for the number of visits. And then I can solve using math. Two times 15 is 30 plus 65. Use a calculator if you need it, but 30 plus 65 is 95 which is what C equals. So my cost is 95, making it $95 for 15 visits. The next problem, to prepare for an upcoming road trip, you fill your 19 gallon gas tank. That's very important information. And then you estimate that your SUV will use about three gallons per hour. So that's also helpful. Write an equation to model this. So again, we have a table to make it helpful. Um, so zero hours, I haven't gone anywhere. I have a full gas tank, so I have 19. Then I, after one hour, I've now used three gallons. So I'm at 16. That pattern's going to continue as I drive for longer periods of time. Okay, And I can now see my pattern here is I'm subtracting three as I go on my Y values. My X pattern is staying the same of add one. Okay, so now I can write this rule using um, G for the amount of gasoline. So G equals, and my pattern there was negative three over one, which is negative three. Instead of using x, I'm going to use h for hours. That's what x is. And then when x is 0, y was 19, so plus 19. You can also flip-flop this around if you'd like. So g equals, keep in mind the signs have to go with it. So 19 was positive. The ne it's negative 3 here, so minus 3h. Okay? And those, those are your two function rules. Number three, writing a function rule for the area of a rectangle whose length is three inches more than its width. So keep in mind that area formula for a rectangle is length times width. So we can use this picture here to label this length and width. 
And then if we read the important information, it says the length is three inches more than the width. So what I'm gonna do is take my length, and instead of using L, I'm going to replace that with three inches more than is plus the width. So I'm gonna take the width plus three. So now when it comes to writing my rule, A equals my length, which is replaced with W plus three. And then I'm timesing all of that by my width. And then I can use the distributive property here. That does kind of look funny, so I can rewrite this first. Now I can use the distributive property. So W times W is W squared. And then W times three is just three W. So that is my rule. Now there is another part to this question here that's not on here. Um, I want to know if the width is seven, what would the length be? Okay, so going one step further. So we're gonna use this formula, A equals W squared plus three W, and we are going to plug in a seven for Oh, sorry, yep, okay, the width is seven. So we're gonna plug in a seven in each of those boxes. So just place value holders. We have A equals, width is now seven. So seven squared plus three times seven. Seven squared is 49 plus three times seven, which is 21. So my area would end up being 70 inches squared. Problem number four. From the elevation of negative 20 meters relative to the surface of water, that just means it's negative 20 meters below sea level. A bottlenose whale dives at a rate of 108 meters per minute. So important information, that whale is starting at negative 20 meters, so 20 meters below water, and then it's diving at 108 meters per minute. And we wanna write a rule. To do that, okay, we are going to start with the D depth equals, and then we're, where did we start? We started at negative 20 meters. That's when we're at zero. We have already, we're already there at negative 20. And then that whale is diving down at a rate of 108 per minute. So diving down, we're getting lower in the water by 108 meters per minute. That per is multiplying by the number of minutes. We don't know how many minutes, that's the function of time here. So you could use T for time, you could also use M for minutes. Um, it's, it really doesn't matter. So there's your function rule. Or like I said, you can rewrite it and signs go with, so negative 108 meters, or minutes, sorry, times minutes, and then subtract 20. Either what option works, okay? What if the whale, well, what is the whale's depth after four minutes? So we are gonna plug in, we're talking about four minutes here. This is why using appropriate letters are helpful. You can clearly see, depending upon what problem, um, which way you wrote your function rule is how you will evaluate. I'm gonna use the first one there, so D equals negative 20 minus 108, and then I'm gonna plug in four for the number of minutes. 100, negative 108, or 108 times four gives me 432 drop down the minus, and negative 20. Negative 20 minus 432 is negative 452. So it's negative 452 meters, or 452 meters below sea level. Problem number five, we're talking about a bottle of vanilla holding 48 teaspoons. That's gonna be helpful information. That's how much it holds for, to begin with. And then the amount of vanilla remaining in the bottle is decreasing by two teaspoons 
per batch. Okay, so writing a function rule for that. So we're talking about the number of batches of cookies and then the bottle of vanilla. So the tricky part here is you have to pay attention here. It's decreasing by two teaspoons per batch. So we don't know how many batches and per is multiplying. We're starting with 48 and all of this is talking about the bottle of vanilla. We don't wanna use B for bottle because we're using B for batches. So I'm gonna use V for vanilla. They're starting with 48 and it is decreasing by two teaspoons per batch. So two for every batch of cookies. Again, you could rewrite that to be V equals negative 2B. Signs go with, that's a positive 48. And then we have to answer the question, how much vanilla after five batches? So we're gonna plug in five for the batches, which would be the letter B. So depending upon which formula you're using. So V equals 48, I'm using this one here, minus two times the number of batches, which we decided was five. And then using order of operations again, two times five is 10. Drop everything else down, 48 minus 10 will give me an answer of 38. So 38 teaspoons of vanilla remain. Last problem. And this one's a little bit trickier. There's a lot more to it. So the general admission, admission tickets to the fair are $9.50 per person. So that's key information. It all day ride passes cost an additional $12.50 per person. So that's important. And you also have to pay for parking. Okay, so we have to use the table here. So it says write a function rule for the cost of going to the fair on Saturday evening at 6 p.m. So I don't wanna forget about that. Saturday evening is a weekend after 4 p.m., so parking is gonna cost me $10. So when I write this function rule, I'm paying attention to key information. So I'm talking about the cost. So C equals, and then I have 950 per person. Again, that triggers multiplying. I don't know how many people, so that's my variable. So 950 times the number of people who go, plus an additional cost of 1250 per person. Again, same thing, multiplying by the number of people. And then a parking is just a flat rate of $10. So here's my function rule. However, you can combine like terms here. So I'm going to simplify this by adding them together to nine, 50 plus 12.50 gives me a straight $22 per person, plus that additional $10 for parking. So that's my final cost. So lastly, how much will it cost, or sorry, that's your function rule. And then how much will it cost for six people? So you're gonna use that formula. Plugging in for the number of P, which is six people. So C equals 22 times six. I should have color coded that there, sorry, six. And then plus 10. So following order of operations, 22 times six, which is 132, plus that additional $10 means it's going to be a cost of $142 to go to that fair.